Hey guys, Viper here today with another guide for Beyond the Wire. This time, I'm looking to help out new players to the game and give you all tips and tricks you need to succeed. I was looking around and noticed there are no recent new player guides. They're all from right around when the game was released, and I want to fix that since a lot has changed in the game since then. Even if you're a veteran, I encourage you to check out the video, especially the last section, because you never know what you might learn. I do want to add a disclaimer that this is still an early access game and any of the details I mentioned could change. But before we get into it, I make videos here on my channel and I live stream on Twitch, YouTube, and Facebook Gaming. I would very much appreciate a follow or a sub on any of the platforms if you'd like to see more Beyond the Wire content. First of all, congrats. You bought Beyond the Wire, installed it, and now you're booting up the game for the first time. It's an amazing game with a ton of potential and lots of future content on the horizon like tanks, planes, tons of new maps, and factions. But you have no idea what you're doing. That's alright, and luckily the devs made the game very intuitive for new players. Before you head into the server browser, we're going to start with the fundamentals, since Beyond the Wire doesn't have a formal tutorial yet. If you've played an FPS before, this will be pretty straightforward. Let's hop into the shooting range, click on which faction you'd like to join, click Recruit, and hit Spawn. I'll teach you about sections and the deployment screen later in this video. You move with your W, A, S, and D keys by default, and look around with your mouse. Press Z to go prone, and then Control to crouch. To jump and vault over objects, press your spacebar. Keep in mind this isn't Call of Duty and you can't vault over objects at the speed of light. It takes time and you're going to be exposed to fire while vaulting. Be careful when you choose to climb over, you might be mid-vault and see an entire squad staring at you in the face on the other side of the tall wall. To sprint when you're moving forward, hold shift. Something important to pay attention to here is your stamina bar. It's a limited resource that refills when not in use. Yes, if you need to move quickly across open ground, it's extremely helpful, but once you stop, your gun will have significantly more sway if you're out of stamina. A helpful trick not a lot of new players know, if you equip your melee weapon, you run significantly faster with it out. I always yell this when my team needs to huff it someplace quickly. Now that you've figured out movement, how do you select different items in your inventory? You have a couple options. A, you can use the top row of number keys to select your corresponding items. B, you can use your scroll wheel to parse your way through all the items and click your left mouse button to select the item. Normally, I choose option B since it's a bit quicker for me and I don't have to take my fingers off the movement keys. But if you find the top number rows easier, feel free to use that. With the King and Country update last year, Beyond the Wire switched to a new single key interaction system. Now what does this mean? It means you respond to a prompt on the screen instead of taking out an inventory item for certain situations. For example, before the change, if you're injured, you need to find your bandage in your inventory, select it, and hold down your right mouse button to heal yourself. Now, the second you're injured, a prompt comes up on the screen to hold down your interaction key and heal yourself. This system works the same with cutting wire, building, and destroying emplacements. It's a lot simpler and easier for new players to get a handle on things. Of course, this can be a bit messy if you have multiple things you'd like to do in a small area since you might have prompts overlapping each other. For example, you'd like to heal your teammate but he died on top of an MG emplacement. You might get a prompt to mount the MG instead of reviving your friend. It can be a bit finicky, make sure to be more precise with where you're looking to make sure you get the right prompt. Alright, so you figured out movement in your inventory, how do you shoot? To fire your weapon, left click the mouse button. Beyond the Wire is different than arcade shooters in the sense that if you have a bolt action rifle, you will need to manually bolt the rifle by left-clicking again. Of course, you can't just fire from the hip all the time in most engagements. You'll want to right-click to aim down your sights. And when you finally run out of ammo, hit the R button, which is the default reload button. If you're coming from other tactical shooters, there might be bullet drop in those games, and there is bullet drop in Beyond the Wire. But most engagements are relatively close quarters, and you don't need to account for it unless you're running a sniper section. Remember the stamina system? When aiming down your sights, you can hold down shift, and this will steady your aim. As you hold down shift, it'll drain your stamina bar. Once it's all the way down, you'll be out of breath and your weapon will fly all over the place. The worst feeling is holding down shift too early, draining your stamina completely, and your target comes into view and you can't hit it because of your weapon swaying. Practice on the shooting range with a variety of weapons to get the hang of it. A great method for accurate, safe shooting is crouch, hold shift, fire, release shift, bolt, repeat. This will allow you to hit accurate shots with any rifle and still have max stamina. Holding your breath is an extremely helpful tool for accurate shots at long and short distances. If you have an LMG, or light machine gun, with a bipod, when you're prone or near an object, tap the C key to deploy the bipod to get better accuracy and create a firing platform. Each player comes equipped with a melee weapon, and almost all rifles can equip a bayonet. Melee weapons can range from an officer sword all the way to a stick with a metal ball at the end. 
The good news is generally all weapons work the same, save for some exceptions. So how do you use your melee weapon? Beyond the Wire has a unique directional melee system that mimics other games such as the Chivalry series and the Mountain Blade series if you ever played those. When you look a certain direction and left click, you swing from that side. For example, I look to my left and I swing from the left side into the right. If I look down, I swing from below all the way up. It makes sense, but it takes some time to get used to. So what do you do if you have your melee equipped and someone's coming at you? Luckily, you're able to block using the right mouse button. Keep in mind, it uses stamina, so you're not able to hold a block forever. The only exceptions to this rule are the French Nail Knife and the Harlem Hellfighter's Bolo Knife. They cannot block melee attacks. Depending on what weapon you're using, you'll use the C key to equip your bayonet and click the middle mouse button to stab. When you have your bayonet equipped, you'll be way more dangerous in close quarters, but your weapon will have more weapon sway if you're trying to aim down your sights, and you also can't block melee attacks. If I know it's going to be tight fighting, I always equip it on my rifle just in case. You never know when a crazed enemy with a shovel is going to run at you. If your section lead asks for a melee charge on a position, you can actually sprint charge with your melee or bayonet out. To charge with your melee, hold your left mouse button and your sprint and forward keys. To charge with your bayonet out, hold the middle mouse button and hold your sprint and forward keys. In a melee weapon versus rifle bayonet fight, bayonet nearly always wins on first contact because of the reach advantage. Keep that in mind if you see someone charging at you with a bayonet and you have your melee equipped. Try and get around them if they're charging straight at you and make them miss. Melee fights are extremely intense and fast-paced. Don't be afraid to get in them. Swinging at the wrong time or blocking the right time can make a huge difference, so I suggest you practice in the shooting range using various weapons. There are three different types of throwable grenades. Fragmentation grenades, which send shrapnel all over the place. Smoke grenades, used to cover advances or cover you as you revive squadmates. And finally, a new addition to the French arsenal, Tear gas grenades, which cause vision blur to the enemy and a lot of confusion. To throw a grenade, equip it from your inventory, and you can overhand throw using your left mouse button or underhand throw with your right mouse button. Both are situational. Overhand throws are for longer distances, underhand throws for enemies close by. My personal favorite is the underhand throw into a bunker slit to clear out entrenched enemies. Aiming your grenade throws doesn't have to be a crapshoot either. Believe it or not, you can actually aim with your thumb on your non-throwing hand for overhand throws, and with your pinky for underhand. Practice on the shooting range, throwing grenades, and see how accurate you can get. Besides your rifle and grenades, there are other items your soldier can equip to help themselves or others on the battlefield. The most important item you'll need is your gas mask. You can equip it by default with the G key. Whenever the enemy commander calls down chlorine gas in your position, or the French start hucking tear gas grenades at you, put it on. It's important to mention you won't be able to aim down sights with it, so I recommend taking your melee out or equipping your bayonet to be ready, just in case you miss your shots. Other special items include binoculars used by section leads, medic packs used by medics, and ammo bags used by riflemen. And there are a ton of others like sandbags, duck boards, etc. There are currently three game modes for Beyond the Wire with more planned. Keep in mind, developers are constantly tinkering with this every update, so things might change. Let's jump in. First, you have front lines. In front lines, your team has to capture points on the map. The amount of capture points is based on the server population. Once you hold the majority of capture points, you start accumulating victory points in the top bar. The more capture points you have over the enemy, the faster you accumulate victory points. If you own 5 capture points to the enemy's 4, you're gaining 1 victory point per second. If you have 6 to their 3, you're gaining 3 victory points per second. But, accumulation maxes out at 3 points per second. To put it in perspective, let's say there are 10 available areas to capture, it doesn't matter if your team has 8 capture points or 10 capture points, you'll still only accumulate 3 points per second. Whichever side gets to 1,000 points first wins the sector, and the whole victory point process starts over again in a different sector of the map. The first team to win three sectors or have more sectors captured by the end of the 60-minute timer wins. Assault is a bit simpler. One team is attacking and one team is defending. There are usually one or two capture zones to defend. Attackers have 15 minutes to capture the first point. Once they do, they receive an additional 15-minute period to capture the next point with a 1 minute 30 second staging zone in between to give the defenders some breathing room to set up. The good news is for the attackers, they get an extra 5 minute overtime if they fail to succeed in capturing a point in regular time. Finally, Firefight is a small scale game mode meant for close quarters battle. It's mostly used for seating servers and competitive team matches. It operates similar to front lines since there are 3 capture points, and once you have the majority of capture points, you start accumulating victory points. One of the only major differences is there are no sectors. You fight over the same three points for the entire 20 minute timer, and the side with the majority of victory points wins. Sections, also known as squads, are how games are won. 
you work with complete strangers to try and win the game and hopefully have a good time doing it. When you load into a new match, you'll automatically be assigned to a team. Hit continue unless there's a buddy on the other team you'd like to join. Teams are usually forced auto-balanced, so sometimes you might need to wait to switch teams. Next, you'll be brought to the section screen. You'll see a create section button. Do not create a section if you don't see any pop up right away. Someone with SL experience will create one. If you're new and haven't watched my section leader guide, you're going to have a bad time and create a bad time for players around you. Be patient and eventually a section will appear. I recommend playing with a rifle section at first. There will be other specialized sections, but a rifle section is the bread and butter of Beyond the Wire. Each faction has specialized sections that are unique. Listed on the screen are the different names of rifle sections for each faction. It can be a bit confusing since the French and German rifle sections are in a completely different language, actually all of their sections are, but you can always rely on the icons to ensure it's the correct one. Once you join in, you'll have different classes to choose from, such as Medic, Assault, Rifleman, and potentially a few others depending on the faction. At first, play a Rifleman to get the hang of things. Medic is also a great beginner class. Personally, it's actually my favorite class in the game, but Rifleman is a great way to get your footing before hopping into specialized classes. You will also have the option to select loadouts when you choose your class. Most of the time, it's a different primary weapon, but if you like to keep things simple, ignore choosing a different loadout for now. There are also different section compositions based on the year of the map layer you're playing. You'll see the difference in faction uniforms and the loadouts on the battlefield. To spawn in, you'll have a couple of options. First, you can spawn in the main spawn points way at the back of the map. If your squad lead was smart, they put down a spawn point for you, which lets you spawn closer to the front line. Spawn points are identified by the large faction flags protruding from them, and they can only be destroyed by explosives or digging them down using the interaction key. Use the faction flag to find out where the enemy spawn points are, and tell your section once you know. You will also have the option to spawn in on your section leader if they didn't put a spawn point down for you quite yet. You will also be restricted and can't spawn in on them if they're on an objective, dead, or in combat. Don't be afraid to ask your section leader to put down a spawn point if it goes down or they haven't put one down yet. It'll make everyone's life easier. Finally, every spawn comes in waves using a game-wide timer, so everyone spawns in at the same time every 30 seconds. Depending on when you die, you might only need to wait 10 seconds to spawn in or the full 30. There are also respawn time penalties if you die too far away from your section lead, with penalty duration varying on how far away you were when you died. The max is 10 seconds, so make sure you stay with your SL and keep squad cohesion, or else you might have to wait nearly 40 seconds to spawn in. I will say though, if your section lead is wandering around the woods, not putting down spawn points, and generally not helping the team, leave your section and find another one with someone who knows what they're doing so you have a good experience. Navigating and finding your way around the map is extremely important. Using your compass and map helps you give situational awareness and where your teammates are or where threats are. First, you can find your directional compass at the bottom of your screen. Zero is north, 180 is south, 90 is east, and 270 is west. To open your map, hit the M key and use the N key to toggle zooming in. Looking at the map, your section mates are green and the rest of your team will be in blue. Section leaders are identified by their chevrons on the map. You will also be able to see enemy markers on the map your team's section leaders have put down. First and foremost, as a new player, I highly recommend getting a microphone to play Beyond the Wire if you don't already have one. You can very well play without one and use text chat, but your experience will be hampered if you don't. When teams and sections communicate at a faster pace, they are more likely to succeed. You can even use a $20 pair of headphones. As long as it has a microphone and the mic quality isn't awful, you're good. There are two types of voice chats you can use as a regular soldier. Local, also known as proximity chat, using the V key. With local chat, use directional callouts using your compass at the bottom of the screen or basic direction. For example, enemy at 240 or enemies to our left in the two-story house. With section chat using the B key, you either want to use grid coordinates or landmarks to communicate things, like lots of Germans near the church or enemy field gun at the top of the hill is raining down fire on us. I will harp on this over and over again, over communication is better than no communication. Knowledge is power to section leaders and your section. If you keep them in the loop about enemy infantry movements or emplacements, they'll thank you and appreciate you for helping win the day. Finally, here is a TLDR list of almost everything we covered today with some extra tips and tricks to help you survive and win on the Western Front. This final list was helped put together by some amazing individuals in the Beyond the Wire community. They want to see new players like you succeed, so I want to thank everyone who contributed on the screen right now. And if you see them out in the battlefield, give them a thanks. If you have a hard time telling the uniforms apart, look at the hats. Make sure to deploy smoke that doesn't compromise your vision as much as well. Follow and listen to your section lead. To move quickly, run with your melee out. Don't silhouette yourself against the horizon and make yourself an easy target. Revive teammates who need it and when it's safe. Don't give up if a medic is nearby. 
put down ammo boxes if someone needs it in your rifleman. If you don't know where to go, stick with your section mates. Make sure you're on the capture point when attacking or defending. You got to play objective over kills. Your life is meaningless until you give it a meaning. Therefore, don't do the same repetitive action which has cost you your life every time. Try something different. You will die a lot, but what you learn from each death will decide whether you're a soldier or a meat shield. And finally, and most importantly, don't be afraid to tell your section you're new and still learning. Generally, most people are kind enough to help you through learning everything you need to. Hopefully everything was helpful I touched upon. If you have any other advice for new players starting out, or if you're new and have questions, comment below. More than happy to take the time and walk you through anything. Don't forget to check out my other Beyond the Wire tutorials and more as they come out in the future.